one of those months where I didn't read a ton sort of just in general but I read just a ridiculous amount during one specific week which resulted in me actually having a pretty good reading month. <laughs> Hello lovely people, my name is Nicole and today I am talking about all the books I read in February. So like I just said, I didn't read a ton during the majority of February, but in one of the earlier weeks there was the Rainbow-thon, which I read like six books during. A number of these are books for school, um, so they're a little bit outside of my usual genre, but we're just gonna kind of roll with it. So let's just get started with Leaf Storm by Gabrielle. Garcia Marquez. This is, like I said, one that I read for school. Um, I'm taking a class on magical realism. It's the kind of thing, it's not my general style. I appreciate from an objective sort of good writing, well-crafted story kind of standpoint, but plot-wise the stories just kind of aren't my thing. The writing style feels a bit too impersonal. I don't know. Not necessarily impersonal because I mean, especially Leaf Storm, which is the main story in this, um, is written from three different points of view, first person, uh, like stream of consciousness, which is a fairly personal style of writing, but I don't know, it's just less emotional than I typically like. It was just something about sort of the general feeling of the book that just didn't really click with me, but I definitely recognize the fact that they are, from an objective standpoint, well-written stories. I mean, hello, you won a freaking Nobel Prize for it. So there's that. I don't know. It just wasn't really my thing. I gave it three stars. Now these next couple books I read during the Rainbowthon, and during my Rainbowthon wrap-up I went in depth about how I feel about them. So I'm just gonna sort of quickly go over them now, and if you want more detail about my thoughts you can go watch that video which I will link in the doobly-doo. So the first book is If You Could Be Mine by Sarah Farazan. This is about two girls living in Iran who are in love, but homosexuality is illegal there, and so one of the girls starts to debate the potential of transitioning to be a male because being trans is just viewed as God's mistake. This one I loved it. It was so beautifully written and like heartbreaking but it also felt really really realistic which I guess probably contributed to it feeling so heartbreaking. It was just absolutely beautiful. I loved the characters. It was the kind of thing where there were a lot of times where I got really frustrated with the characters but I still understood why they were doing the things that they were doing. So even if I didn't agree with them, I like understood their motivations and thought that they were valid motivations, even if I thought that they were being idiots. I don't know, it, it was really, really, really good and I absolutely loved it. I gave it 4.5 stars. Then I read The Accident Season by Moira Fowley Doyle and this was one that, there were a lot of things that I really liked about it and a lot of things that I really struggled with about it. So there wasn't like a clear cut, like I loved it or I hated it, because while I thought that the writing was really beautiful and I think the story, especially the premise um, and sort of the beginning of going into it was really, really interesting, uh, but near the end things got really confusing and muddled and I couldn't quite figure out what was going on, how things were getting resolved, which was really frustrating. But overall, I did like it. Uh, I gave it, I think, 3.5 stars. Then I read The Princess, The Scoundrel, and The Farm Boy by Alexandra Bracken and this is a retelling of A New Hope which just, oh, reading this felt like a wonderful resurgence of like nostalgia and just good warm fuzzy feelings because I love Star Wars. I grew up on Star Wars. This was my childhood and just reading it from a new perspective from an author that I love was just so fantastic. I don't think it added that much to the original story, but it was still very much enjoyable, and I gave it four stars. Then I read The Miseducation of Cameron Post by Emily M. Danforth, and this is one of those stories that I had been wanting to read for a while. It's sort of a iconic book in the young adult queer section, uh, and I am so glad that I finally got my hands on it and that I finally had a chance to read it because this book is so good. I 100% understand why it has become so iconic and it deserves every little bit of praise. The writing was fantastic, the characters were fantastic, the story was really, really interesting. There was literally nothing about this book that I did not like. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. Then for the last of the books that I read during the Rainbowthon is Boy Most Likely To by Huntley Fitzpatrick. This is a companion novel to My Life Next Door. I really enjoyed this. It had been a while since I read the first book, 
but that didn't really hinder my enjoyment too much. I mean, I probably would have enjoyed parts even more if I had remembered more of the first book, but I still was able to fully love this one. They managed to incorporate a plot line that normally I cannot do. It's one of my immediate turnoffs when it comes to books. If I hear that I, a book has that plot line in it, I will just not even bother picking it up because so often it just, it squicks me out. I don't like it, but it actually managed to be done really, really well in a way that I really, really liked in this one, which seriously impressed me. Um, I gave it four stars. So the next book I read was another one for class and that is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I just want to start off by giving a trigger warning for sexual assault and suicide mentions in this book. This was a difficult book to read. Not in like the writing style was difficult to read. I actually found like I was re I read it really quickly um, and like the writing style was really easy to understand. Margaret Atwood's writing is absolutely beautiful. What made it difficult to read was just the content. I kept having to put it down and just like find some way to vent my anger because so much of the content in this book made me so mad just at how horrible and unjust this society is. It was absolutely infuriating. There wasn't a ton of actual action going on in the book and I feel like I would have liked to see a bit more happen because the main character was kind of passive and didn't actually go out and do stuff for herself and make things happen. She just kind of let things happen to her. Um, and so not a ton happened, especially for the first half of the book. And so I would have liked to see a bit more action, but overall I did think it was absolutely beautifully written and it's one of those books that I think is important for people to read if they are in a mindset where they can handle this kind of intense content. It doesn't get that graphic, but it does get just kind of emotionally intense. So yeah, I gave it four stars. Then I read I Crawl Through It by A.S. King and this was a very, very weird book. Um, if you've read The Alex Crow by Andrew Smith, the writing style kind of reminded me of that. Just the very sort of surrealist. It might be able to be put in the category of magical realism, but it would be sort of pushing it to sort of very heavy on the magic, magical realism. But I think surreal is, surrealist is a good word to describe it. It's just weird. Um, and it's not that it was bad, it was just... I went into it expecting some emotional contemporary. Like the description that I saw for it basically said that it was following I think four different characters uh, who are going to the school that is regularly getting bomb threats and the question is sort of who is sending these bomb threats. And so I thought it was going to be this, you know, emotional contemporary novel and then I was not expecting this. It was, I don't know how to describe it other than very, very weird, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, I did think it was very interesting and it was definitely an experience to read. Uh, it just was not at all what I was expecting. I gave it 3.5 stars. I mean, as always, A.S. King's writing is absolutely stunning. It was just so, so strange. Then I read Stars Above by Marissa Meyer and this is the short story collection that connects to the Lunar Chronicles series. Of the stories that are in here, most of them are prequel type things for most of the characters, except for the last story, which functions as a sort of epilogue to the series. I think my favorite stories were the ones that followed Wolf, Thorn, and Kai, although that may just be because we didn't get to see from their points of view in the series, and so reading from their points of view in this was a lot of fun. Also, the last story, which I actually skipped ahead and read first, it just made me so happy and seeing all the characters interact a little bit further down the road made me so happy. Cinder and Kai were just especially cute in it and it, it made me happy and I loved it. I think my least favorite was the little android just because supposedly that was following Aiko, I think, but I didn't really see the connection as to how that became Aiko. I mean, like I saw Aiko's personality, kind of. That story just kind of confused me. Overall, these were so much fun to read. I could read endless amounts of stories about these characters and be perfectly happy. I gave it four stars. Next book I read was a uh, Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab. I made a full video review on this so if you want in-depth thoughts it's it's there. I will link it in the doobly-doo. Um, it's 13 and a half minutes of me just rambling about how much I loved this book. Oh my god it was so good. 
I can't say whether or not I liked it better than the first one just because they were both amazing and I don't think I can choose. It's just, literally everything about this book made me so happy. There were moments where I was laughing and crying and feeling like I needed to yell at certain characters. I absolutely love that we got to spend so much time just hanging out with Lila. Um, as just Lila, not as Lila following around Kel. And then we got a lot of Kel and Rye relationship dynamic stuff, and it was just so good, and so much more Rye. So much more Rye. I love Rye, he's my favorite character. And the ending, I'm just gonna say I need the next book, like now. Um, I don't want to say anything about the ending, because I was kind of spoiled for a little bit of the ending on Twitter, um, and I don't want to do that to anyone else. But. I need the next book like as soon as humanly possible. I'm so excited. I get to go meet V.E. Schwab on the first. <sighs> I'm kind of dying of excitement. Um, but yeah, it, it was good. I gave it five stars. <laughs> and then the last book I read this month is actually a play and that is Dunsinane by David Gregg. Greg, I'm sorry. This is sort of a sequel to Macbeth by William Shakespeare. It follows sort of what happens in Scotland after Macbeth's death and how the people who are still alive sort of help figure out who gets to be king now and it's a lot of really interesting like politics stuff which is never something I have ever said before um, because I tend to find politics in books really boring but uh, mainly the thing that made this this uh, fun for me was just the character of Grouch which is the character of Lady Macbeth from Macbeth and now she has a first name she is Grouch uh, the name Macbeth is never actually said in this, which I think is really interesting because it makes it not about him. It makes it about the country. This is a book that I never would have picked up by myself, and I think that if I'd just been reading it on my own, I probably would have just been really bored. But with the analysis that I did as part of the class, I, I learned some really interesting things that I wouldn't have noticed otherwise in this. And I actually ended up kind of enjoying it, but overall, I still didn't love it, but I did enjoy it more than I expected, uh, so I gave it 3.5 stars. So those are all the books I read this month. Let me know if you've read any of these, what you thought in the comments. I love you, and I will see you later.